is right. Welcome, welcome everybody back to Q Points, the mobile DJ podcast. You, my friend, are not Anthony. Who are you, you imposter? It's me. I'm Brett. I'm back again. Anthony is on vacation this week, which is unfortunate for him. Who told him he could go away during June? I had a signed contract with him saying that he's not allowed to take vacation (laughs) the entire year. I'm pretty sure I said no one's allowed off in June. And he just up and left in June. So uh, here I am hosting with you today. I'm I'm excited. So I'll have some fun today. Yeah, we got some good topics to talk about. You look like you have some bags under your eyes. Was it a busy weekend? This is a busy weekend. It's June right now. We're in the height of the busy season, and we had uh, Sweet 16 on Friday that I personally did, backyard college grad parties, uh, lighting for weddings. It's just been absolutely nuts, and uh, team no sleep, for sure. (laughs) The backyard party was a lot of fun. The wedding was great. It was just a a good weekend all around, but uh, here we are, key points, and ready to uh, discuss some awesome topics. You know the uh, Atlantic City DJ Expo is coming up in August, right? That is you know, I've been wanting to go to that for years. I've always been afraid because I would have to leave all my credit cards, oh yeah, my deeds to my house, every, everything at home because yep. I'm bad. I'm bad alone in like you know I DJ now and online, you know. But I couldn't imagine being there with all these new products. I'm like a kid in a candy just store. Just leave it home and just go to look at the stuff and meet other DJs and network. It's coming up August 12th to the 15th at Harris and AC, and uh, I'll be there if you want to come say hi. And being that I have a casino coming, I'm going to gamble. I'm, yeah, I'm probably going to end up going with you. We'd love to do some interviews down there. Oh, We're going to yeah. be there in yep. some way, shape, or form. Definitely. You know, I, I'm. That's going to be such a cool time, though. Yeah. So, and you've gone before, right? Oh, I've gone maybe a dozen times. And every year, something different, something new. And I meet people that uh, make the whole experience worth it. A lot of the different manufacturers are there with all yes, their new yep, products yep. and everything like that. Everybody's got all the tables with all their equipment spread out. And you get to see everything hands-on, test out all the new equipment, and meet all the people that make and sell the equipment, which is something that mm-hmm. is interesting to me, at least. It's also a good time to network with other DJs. Absolutely. Because, you know, yeah. a lot of the you know bigger players are going to be there. And blow know. off some steam because we all work too hard and it's a chance Well, that, it used uh, to be on the weekends. Am I correct with that? And now it's there, now it's during the week. Ages and ages ago. Now it's like a Monday through Wednesday or Tuesday through As Thursday type be, of thing. Because, I mean, yeah, because we're working on the weekends. Who's going to show up to a DJ expo yeah. when we're supposed to be And DJing. we got to wake up and drive to Atlantic City. so Which isn't know. around the corner. It's not terribly yeah. far. But, for, you know. for us in New York. But uh, definitely oh, worth true. checking out Atlantic City DJ Expo, the DJExpo.com. Yeah, no, that that's yep. definitely something that I would like to go to, and I'm probably. How was your weekend? It was busy, man. You know, I mean, we had a we had a really we got a couple really cool events, um, and then Saturday night actually, I brought out my brand new donut wall. Oh, the donut pretty, wall! Yeah, you so show me that. We thing. did. We started yeah. getting. We started diving into specialty, uh, specialty donuts and specialty events with with dessert bars and everything like that because it's such a niche that is just opening up now. It's like frozen yogurt in the nineties, man. Oh it's yeah. It's like it's starting to take off, so I'm trying to get in before. And your donut wall looks beautiful. You showed it to me, and I think it is the, uh, awesome. The thing about the donut wall is it's not something you can go online yet mm. and just and buy. It's not you know on I mean? Amazon, it, like there, it donut doesn't wall, exist. Click and buy. You know what I mean? I had to have a you know I had to have a carpenter or a skilled carpenter build it from scratch. Mm. And it shows. It because looks like furniture. I appreciate that. Yeah. And the biggest thing, and I, and this can go for all things, is there's there's a time and a place to build something. Yep. You know, I've learned it. When I first when I first started my company, I needed a new black facade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, I'm gonna save the money. Yeah. I'm gonna go to Home Depot and then I'm gonna go to Joanne's. I'm gonna buy a And how did that come out? I'm gonna not only was it so <laughs> damn heavy, but I spent more money because I had to get the piano hinges yep. And I mean, I must have used it once and I threw it out. And then you went and bought one. And then I went and bought yeah. one. Some things you buy, some things you make. I, I, always, I, I try to build the things that they don't sell. Yep. You know what I mean? When we have to, when we're using the TVs, you know, there's not a set video rack that is done set with the input. It's true. That you need I built have. mine from scratch. You need to build yeah. that type of stuff. And we yep. have our, you know, our DJ boards, the flight cases themselves. We put XLRs in the back. We put power out. That doesn't come standard. Nope. So the customizations, I believe, those are things that I like to, you know, go about and do. But a lot of things, man, hey, you got to bite the bullet. You got to pay for it. I hear that. You, you, I hear have, that. you have to pay for it. But I'm tired myself. Yeah. Because I missed the night of sleep. So well, we're all on so, team no sleep. Exactly. So. We had an event Saturday night, and then um, I host a triathlon series. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. I yeah. Saw so, we, uh, so we had to be there at 4 a.m. for setup. We had two different DJ setups in mm. two different areas. We had uh, the photo booth out. You we, said 4 a.m., right? 4 a.m. Wow. Yeah, 4 a.m. We're, we're setting up. Uh, it's not a bad day because we're home by noon. Mm. It's not terrible, but it's like that 2 o'clock area. Oh, yeah. It's like when you start to crash. Uh, but we do a lot of different – every year we've added new things on. So when I first started, I was just the announcer. Just hired to announce. I talked to the microphone and I left. Then I was like, you guys have, you know, not the greatest sound system. Why don't you let me do sound? 
And then the next year it was like, you guys should give something to the, you know, athletes when they're done. So we mm. started doing concessions. Very smart. And then the last year we added the photo booth. I said, you, they already had the step and repeat. I said, why aren't we taking pictures? So we did that. So every year you do this event, you're upselling and, and adding on more. I believe if growing. you have, I mean, for the most part, I would say about 50% of my business is residual accounts since I focus Repeat more on the corporate business, side. Referral business. If you're not adding something new onto a client every year, you're doing something wrong. You're doing yourself a disservice exactly. and you actually might lose the client. You need to continue to revamp Absolutely. and revisualize something that you haven't done before. Like the you donut know? wall. Like the donut wall or even with the triathlon yeah. this year, what I've added on is when we have the bigger races where there's six, 800 racers, we do two TVs on mm. either side of the finish line and I live stream it. That's awesome. So as you're coming in, you're seeing yourself at the finish line. And they probably lose which their is, minds. Which like, is oh awesome. God, it's, 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 another, it's, it's another cool thing. The wow factor. You got to have the wow factor, man. Wow factor for, for us is we officially have hit 800 subscribers. Is on, that true? On our YouTube 800 page. subscribers? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're getting there. I don't, it's, 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 wow, <laughs> 805. That's incredible. Yeah, man, we're, well, uh, I like to thank everyone for the support. Absolutely. And I have to invite everyone to subscribe and share if you're watching. Please do. Because Please we are subscribe. trying to grow, yes. get bigger. You and, can find uh, us on the web. QPointsPodcast.com. There we have a really cool forum you could check out. All our past episodes are there. This is episode 15 already, so it's kind of crazy because that doesn't like sound like that many episodes. But when you're putting in the effort to make the show and it's concurrent every week, I think that's the hardest part is a lot of – because I was looking up a statistic, and I think I've talked about this a long time ago on the show. Mm -hmm. But with podcasts, there's such a wide – there's so many successful podcasts – but for every successful one, there's millions that aren't. And because the con- I feel like the- it's really without being concurrent. Yes. You know, if you're doing a, a, an episode every month, it's really hard to gain the traction. No, it's got to be I'm, at least weekly in my opinion. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's certainly not easy putting out a weekly podcast. Oh, no. I this really, has been it, it's really not. A major undertaking. Because, you know, it's like it's, it's Tuesday, then it's Friday. And then all of a sudden, it's somehow Monday. Yep. And it's like, oh my god, I got to put everything <laughs> together for the show in a couple Especially days. Especially when you don't sleep and the days blend into each other, you don't know what's. And not going to on. mention that my, the phone's always going. Yep. You know, it, I it, think Will's phone rang about twenty-five times uh, before it, we started. This time, it, and which was very impressive. But you know what's annoying is that like they're all phone calls <laughs> yeah. that I'll call back, and I yep. know I play phone tag with more people all day. than I, 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 I. Oh my god, it's. Sometimes so you win phone tag, and it's a good feeling. Sometimes, but a lot of times, and then they'll call back, and it's the most inconvenient time. I'm under a truck fixing something. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to get that last uplight. Well, the on struggle the is real. The struggle, the struggle is, real. is real. You know what uh, will really help us with the concurring podcast every week? Tell us what you want to hear. Yes, Tell exactly. us what you're into, what you want to have us discuss, and we will discuss You can also it. find us on yep. Facebook at Q Points Podcast. Leave I some get, comments exactly. and say, hey, we want you to talk about this. We want you to review this product, and we'll get our hands on it and go through all the details and right. show you all about it. And you if know? you don't have time, let's say you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too busy driving. I can't. That's fine. Listen to our Apple podcast. Yeah. You can find it there. You can find it on Spotify, Q Points Podcast. Again, you can't miss us. We come out every single Wednesday at noon. At noon. At noon. At noon. Just it's the best time on Wednesday. Wake up, go to the deli, grab a good, you know, hit grab some meat, that Q-Points and hit podcast. play and just drive. I mean, it's a nice, it's a good time. You get to hear, uh, you know, bread on. So that's it. So that's I'm, I'm checking our schedule today. We have a pretty exciting show. We have a super, uh, I'm very right? happy. We got a great guest coming on. Who do we have today? So we have Ed Jacobs. All right. And um, so I had a couple meetings with Ed, Ed in the past. Okay. And for anyone that's in the industry, if you don't know EJ the DJ, You've been living under multiple rocks. A couple of buildings <laughs> fell on you. So, I mean, you're talking about one of the yeah. innovators in the industry. You're living in a box. You and I'm know. really, I, you know, I, I've had some great meetings with him in the past. And just kind of, you know, and they, there, was, there was no pressure meetings. They were just, I want to hear about your business. He actually mm-hmm. reached out to me and, and asked me that. And so it, there was so much insight I got. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, you're, start, you're talking about someone who's been in the industry 30 plus years. And there's not too many of them. That are and still really, doing it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I want to. I really want to get into the depth of how he's been able to continue and and really stand out from other companies. Whether the because storms, that's a, that's a, that's a name you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right. I, I, it's a household you know, name, it's especially a household here name. in the Long Island, New York market. And I feel yep. like, and I feel like, there's a lot of people in the industry that are young now that don't understand how long it takes to, to get a, to build a brand. Yeah. You know, to build, especially you know, in the event industry. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we're not talking about apparel. We're not talking, you know, I'm not talking on TV show. Nope. Q points. 
<laughs> You're talking about, Shameless you know, building a, a brand through families of generations yep. of good memories. Yep. That's pretty hard to do. From and uh, it's not, doing their bar and bat mitzvah and yep. going right to their wedding. And, it, and it, it takes years. Many years. Many years to do. And a lot of people fail and they get out and they go teach. They go work another job. Well, and it's the biggest cliche. Yep. But, you know, you need to mess up. You need to fail. You need to, you need to learn things. The biggest disservice you can do to yourself is not learning something from a mistake you've made. Absolutely. You know, you, you know between learning how to prep properly, calling ahead to make sure, you know, you get there on time, <laughs> the you're not too late, your times event. are correct. Yep. All these Double small check, things will truly, check. you know, make you into a successful entrepreneur mm-hmm. and, and, a, and a business owner and a yeah. good person. You know what I mean? It'll Especially be- in the market that we're in. It's so saturated right now where anyone can have uh, easy access to DJ equipment and music and just start DJing whenever they want. I, you know what? It's it's interesting, though, because the the amazing thing about Long Island itself, where we where, where we live, where we do the show, is that there are so many companies. There are also so many people. Yes. I mean, you're talking about between, you know, Nassau, Suffolk, and you add in Queens. And, Billions and of people, you're and they're all more, having parties. And you're talking about more people yep. than live in some countries. That's insane to think yep. about, man. And you're also talking about a higher capital, you know, area. I mean, you yeah. know, people are making more money here. And it's, more, it's much more expensive to live. Don't get me wrong. But you're talking about people that are making more money, spending more money. We have a good economy right now. People are, you know, oh, yeah. enjoying spending the money. The wallets you know, are opening, which is good. Keep open. Yeah, <laughs> we like, like that. Damn wallets open, baby. And then uh, we have also, we're going to be doing a uh, another review today. Yes, and the review. And what are we doing on the review? We have the Ape Labs Ape Stick 4s with us. I'm very excited to see these I can't wait things. to show you. These things are awesome. Straight from Germany. Uh, straight from Germany. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of using them on several events. And I actually have people come up to me and say, these things are so cool. Right. Where can I get them? And then I tell them where. And they go, oh, we can't afford that because those are for DJs only. Uh, yeah, that, and that's what I like professional about them. Equipment. They're professional equipment. Yep. There's a little bit of a difference there. You know, I'm, I'm a, I, I, and I haven't really used them. I've played around with them a little bit mm-hmm. at a demo. I hear that I'm a ex- lot. People see them in the stores. Right. They haven't actually had hands-on with them. They are kind of new. Um, right. Ape Labs is kind of breaking into the U.S. market right now. They are a German-based company. Right. And they've been around for a while, but I feel like they've really come up with some creative uh, items that are coming out soon, and they are really making that effort to listen to the customers and break into that U.S. market and uh, play nice. And them. I'm excited to see is that I, as you know, and as I've said with the list, the viewers multiple times, is I've always hold I hold two manufacturers very close and dear to my heart: hmm. QSC and Chauvet. Oh, yeah. and I'm really hoping that. Ape Labs is going to be the newest favorite of mine you know, we, because we all, I played uh, with them, and there is a couple of features that we're going to go over. <laughs> yes, that blow me away. Oh, you're going to and be that blown make away. it where that could be my newest contender. And you I'm know, you're going to leave this show today and go, go right, right to, to the, the store, store <laughs> and plop down that card and buy them. You know me too well, man. Because what can I say? We you have know? buying problems. We, it's okay. You know what it is? I think we take so much pride in our quality of our product. We love what we. I do. would say it's probably thirty percent of the things that I buy, maybe more. Mm are things that the client doesn't even see. Maybe It's maybe more than that, to be honest. Yeah, they go in your house, and you're sitting up all morning playing lights in your living room. You know, I'm like, I think we can make this look better. (laughs) Yep. I might not make more money on it right this second, Mm. but I'm giving a a proper experience that I think that, you know... It's a lot of experimentation, especially when you're buying new equipment, to find the look that you're trying to achieve. I'm excited, man. I'm I'm so happy to be here, brother. All right, Anthony, we miss you, bro. Anthony, We are here, (laughs) the Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast. We're coming up with... Jacobs of EJ the DJ when we get back guys again the Q Points mobile DJ podcast every single Wednesday at QPointsCovFest.com at noon <laughs> <laughs> at 12 noon we, we will be right back after this
Welcome, welcome, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Q Points, the Mobile DJ Podcast. Ed Jacobs, thank you so much for being here. Man. Pleasure, pleasure, it's, Will. You know, it's it, it's awesome that I was you know we were able to get you on the show. Absolutely. So um, happy to be here. I mean, for the people that are watching, you, you should know who this man is. You should have at least heard of the company. EJ the DJ. Yeah. How did you know? Tell me how you uh, how, how did it start? You know, what, what year? You know, everything. Uh, the the gist. Very young at age. Uh, love for music. Involved at the roller rinks and uh, and skating around and met a DJ and uh, got my way into the DJ booth. And what year? Thir- what, what Thirteen year, years old. What year uh, did you start the company? I, I started the company in 1985. 85. So that's really when it kind of started to take off. Yeah. The mobile DJ company. I mean, because there wasn't. And you're talking about a time where there weren't any. You, you couldn't free buy flight cases and you know you couldn't. None of that existed. Nah, it was two turntables, and uh, you're lucky if you had a pitch control. Lucky. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you set up on a table, and um, you were playing with vinyl. So it's probably pretty crazy to see where the business has yeah, gone. Yeah, pre-mixed <laughs> tapes were made with uh, cassette players Set, and, yep. pa- and pause buttons. And a little real, sometimes some reel to reels. I think I, it was a you, different you, time back then. It's totally, I mean, you're talking yeah. about a totally different... Band sets off of tape players. Yeah? Yep. A lot, and and I think a lot of people today don't really know where the business started from, so they don't really have that appreciation. Yeah. You know, I, it's, it's, especially it, the younger guys just getting in; they don't know the yeah. uh, trials and tribulations that we've all been through to get to where we are today. Yeah, you know, they're growing up in a digital world. Digital world, mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's hard to see it. It's hard it, when it's it, in front of you. When what's in front of you, it's so hard to think about how primitive, in a sense, it was. Yeah, to the sense of how it is now. Or I mean, you know, you used to have crates of records and then CDs, and now it's a little hard drive that holds, you know, a million songs. Listen, yep. you know, that that's the difference today. Um, the DJs today are really creative digitally. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're more like music producers. Um, I like to think we got the shaft back then because <laughs> now they walk in with a laptop. Yeah. They plop down. They get to earn their money. You know, I, I needed I needed a trailer and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, 12 crates and milk crates every time I did yeah. a job. But a uh, different time. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. When I, you know, whenever I'm out, you know, there's always some, you know, drunk uncle. Someone has to come up to the DJ booth at a wedding. Be like, you guys got it so easy now. And I'll be like, you're right. This laptop right. and this hard drive isn't equivalent to what you had to do. Yeah. However, these damn TVs. Wow, look at that. These damn TVs, you know, the big photo booth back there, we're still carrying heavy crap. <laughs> it's just yes, it's are. just transitioned into a, into a new area, you know, but it's yeah. just, as far as the music goes, it's just crazy how far we've come. Yeah. But the industri- indus- industry, interesting thing that I want to talk to you about is that you've been in the business over 30 years. A lot of the guys that I know of the names that have been in the business 30 years might not necessarily be as, as big of a factor as they were maybe 10 to 15 years ago. What are you doing right? You know, everybody finds their niche. Um, I I don't think my business is the size that it was 10 or 15 years ago either. We're still relevant because we're really creative and I surround myself with really good people. So, I mean, at the end of the day, um, we treat every event like they're one at at a time Mm -hmm. and uh, every client has their vision and we play more of a producer role, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I enjoy that. It, it keeps it fresh for us, even after yeah. 30 years. It's not the same thing. Exactly. You know, it's, you're building custom yeah. events, which yeah. is which is much different. It's not yeah. a, it's not so much of a cookie cutter type of thing. You know, you're Correct. building something into like, wow, I just went to that event, and it's totally different. I, I think we try to do that as well. I mean, it's about trying to build an experience where it's just like, yeah, I went to a party this weekend. It was okay. You yeah. know, it was the same music. It was the same setup. It was this and that. Always trying to build new things and trying to trying to keep it fresh. You know, it's the culture too. Your 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 team and your people have to understand what you're trying to do, and, and that these families look at these days, whether it be a wedding or a bar mitzvah, um, they they look at these days as as one of the biggest milestones in their life. Sure. So you got to get behind their vision and what they want, and your team produces that for them. Right. So it keeps it fresh. It keeps it creative. And uh, it's, it's why we still love it. Brett and I talk about it a lot. Have you had a hard time finding good staff, keeping good staff? Yeah, you know what I've gotten really uh, way better at uh, as the times changed. And, and um, I, I just think uh, young people, uh, 20s, teens, etc. I think their expectations of, of the world. 
work is is different. Mm-hmm. I've gotten way better at the interviewing process. Okay. I could I could I could sort of see up front what they're gonna be like. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they got to be creative. Um, they've got to put their work first. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, and they really have to buy into the fact that we're doing something completely unique and personal and emotional right. and special. And if they don't do that, they should be in more of a cookie cutter job. Right. You know? I, I just don't think that, you know, I don't want to say the younger guys, but I just want yeah. the newer guys trying to enter the industry, mm-hmm. you know, looking for a job at a prominent company. I don't think they understand that we are a weekend based for the most part. We're, we're doing, we have weekends, you know, we, we, the summer, we, they, they, why can't I have off? What do you mean? Why can't you have off? You know what I mean? Yeah. Look, I mean, I, I don't. I don't even look at it as just weekends. I when I interview when I talk to young people that that are interested in the event business, uh, my my comment to them or my advice to them up front is that this is a this is a lifestyle business. Mm-hmm. This is not a business that you get to check in and check out. If you're really smart at coding or programming or something else, you know, you could show up at an office, you can get there at nine or right. eight, you can leave at four o'clock and leave your work behind. The event business is not like that. You know, if you're going to be successful in it, it's a lifestyle. You have to enjoy it. You have to live it. Um, and, it and if not, you're not going to last. And, and, you know, quite honestly, that's why a lot of guys don't last that long. Yeah. It's like they could do it for a certain amount of time. And they're done. But they can't do it forever. Yeah. It's, you know, so it's a combination of, of uh, really loving that and then building a really good team around you. Yeah, the team is huge. I mean, I mean Brett's got a good, about, you know, good it's team. It's all about your team. It's, Without yeah. your team, you have nothing. Yeah. Yep. They're your ground crew. They're who the client interacts with and sees. And if they're not professional and responsible, clean right. cut, and making the client happy, you you have nothing. You have no business. They have Absolutely. to have an invested interest in, you know. They have to where, be the brand, know, live the brand. Otherwise, they're just showing up to work and, and that's going it. through the motions. And we actually had a conversation. People notice. We had a yeah. conversation yeah. off camera um, during the week last week about how in today, especially with Facebook and everything, there's so many guys that are really just trying to bounce around. You know, I want to work for this company, this company. There's no real loyalty to one single brand anymore. You know, it's well, been happening look, a lot. To, uh, here's, here's the benefit to me with, because uh, I like to look at the glass half full. Mm-hmm. Uh, the benefit to me to social media and to Facebook and Instagram is that, you know, from a, from a, from a uh, integrity end, you always have to do the right thing because you're always being viewed. It's true. Okay. From right. an employee end, if you're not going to be honest with your boss on where you are, I mean, you know, we have every per, every talent that we use, whether uh, uh, it's every weekend or once in a while, we have access to their social media. It's part of the application process. Right. So if they're going to tell me they're at their sister's mm-hmm. wedding and then they're on Facebook, <laughs> you know, working, right. um, that's really not the kind of people we want to hire right. anyway. It, it's, uh, it's all about being honest and open because, you know what, listen. I don't mind it. They're, listen, they're a reflection of you. If yeah. you're, if you, if you handle yourself that way with your clientele, right. and your staff handles that them, them, you know, that way with you, right. you know, it's 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 transparent. It's the way it should be. And I and, and it's like I don't have a problem if you go work for another company for an event. That's not my problem. Mm-hmm. The problem is be be honest about it. Yeah. Don't don't tell me I can't work this weekend. I've got something going on. You know, a family job, and then I find out you were working for another. Just. Don't don't do that because yeah, well, now you know what the, old, the the more you do this, the more you don't waste time on that. Right, and that's I mean, what I started to I, learn. I, I see that, and then I just don't look back. Right, you no, know, you have it's to not the on. kind of people I want to surround myself. Right, because you have that problem once, it's just going to be a snowball yeah, effect. It becomes a pattern, up. and then you're stuck in the pattern if you don't do something about it. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, yep. staffing has been such an interesting thing this past year. I've had so many guys that were promising, mm-hmm. and then I just I had to cut them loose. That's every just, industry. I have guys that start, work one job, and then text me the next day, not for me. You know, right. they, they try. But it I'd out. rather do style. that. You know, it's the guy. It's when you get strung along. They you have to. You, you have to be the one to cut the cord early. Really. You have to. You know. You know. See where that's at. Hundred percent. I, I have to admit something right now. Okay. And, I love uh, this. I'm in 1997, excited. I had my bar mitzvah, and EJ the DJ did my bar mitzvah, and all my family, three of my cousins, 
1995 to about 2000, and best parties that our families have ever had. That's fantastic. That's why we I didn't you know, know that. use EJ. Yeah, we want to tell you to be on the show. Isn't that awesome? I want to surprise you a little That's bit. That's awesome. Uh, so thank you for that, and it's hey. an honor to be interviewing you today. Awesome. Um, but now I would like to say that part of uh, EJ being a part of my bar mitzvah and my family inspired me to be a DJ today. That's so fantastic. So I have to ask you how you feel about inspiring the, the current generation of DJs, because I'm 34 now, yeah, uh, and I've been doing this since I was 15, yeah. you know, shortly after my mitzvah. So how do you feel about inspiring all these people that you've done their parties that are now becoming DJs? And they say, I, I want to do that. Yeah. I, I, I know it. of two or three other uh, young gentlemen mm -hmm. that I've had the opportunity to be part of their life and their special day and mm -hmm. now have entered into this industry in this field, and, and it's really gratifying. I mean... Um, Look, I was always into theater. That's why mm -hmm. the bar mitzvah thing mm -hmm. was kind of natural to me. I got an eye for talent, and I, and I look for, for good talent, and I like the interaction part of it. Um, and that's sort of w what I remember as a kid. I remember 9, 10, 11 years old going to family oh, parties, yeah. and back then it was really right. bands. But right? earlier was, was dancing as a... And I'd be like, oh, man, that leader of the band, you know, he that was cool. cool. Yeah, he's yeah. cool, you know, that, yeah. that's fun. I want to do that. I want to be the wedding singer. Right, right. right. exactly. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's fantastic. I think also at this stage now, you're, you're, you're going to be inspiring. Uh, Absolutely, I am. Yeah. I see yeah. uh, a lot of people that are... Who have done their kids' parties, and that was 10, 15 years ago when it first started. Absolutely. And now they are starting to work with us. And it's a little weird. Some of the equipment it's, I have right. is older than some of the, the staff that, I have, yep. and it's like it's funny building. you talk about the equipment. I, I, you know, we we've saved things over the years, and now um, we we're looking to take one of our Technique twelve hundred turntables. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna glass and close it. And, yeah, nice. And we're gonna put it in our sales <laughs> suite. <laughs> and it's like, like an a, artifact. Yeah, it's an the artifact. DJ, the museum of EJ exactly. the DJ. <laughs> I regret to this day selling my 1200s and all my vinyl. Uh, I wanna, I wanna throw something out there. Sure. Like we, 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 uh, we always think of cool, creative things that can bring back, uh, or sort of, or look back uh, at our history of, of what we did in 30 years, and. Um, I had this idea. I wanted to contact every client we've ever done a bar mitzvah for. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get one of the t-shirts that they give out as the favorite. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I know? couldn't tell you where that That's is. <laughs> and, and if you did 300 to 500 events a year times 25 years oh my less, God. Like, I could probably do a really cool room. Oh, yeah, that'd be with sick. All the a room, room yeah, like an entire Macy's. Yeah. <laughs> <That's not laughs> that would be pretty yeah, incredible. We could yeah. do a cool room, you know, wallpaper the room with all the T-shirts over the years. That would be, that's actually, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. I, I, and that's, again, differentiating yourself. Yeah. Yep. You walk, if I walked in to, to, to go get something, and, I, and I, I'm meeting with a client, you know, and there's a room full of T-shirts of all of it. Yeah. This I is mean, all the parties we've yeah. done. This isn't thank you. With the glass and yeah. This is something <laughs> different. Table in the middle, like yeah. I'm booking that DJ right away. Yeah. 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 So where can we find you online? Uh, www.ejthedj.com. Awesome. Seven letters. And, and, and uh, really quick, what's yeah. what's next? What's next for the company? Where are we headed? Uh, listen, we're just doing what we do. Bigger we and brighter. Enjoy, we, we we enjoy it. We got. Uh, a major celebrity wedding coming up this weekend, Very which we're cool. really excited Fun about. Stuff. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And I want cool to thank stuff. you so much. It's really such thank an honor you. to have you on. Pleasure, and I, Absolute pleasure. You know, I, I look forward to yep. everything coming up. Cool. Again, EJ the DJ, thank you so much for coming on, Mr. Ed Jacobs. Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast. we got some really interesting things we want to talk about. Get the product review coming up and some more fun stuff. We'll be back right after this. Thanks. Good cool. That was all.
things happen. Learn. Welcome. Welcome back. We're here. Q Points, the yeah. mobile DJ podcast. Where did Ed go? I, oh. He disappeared. Bye, buddy. Hope yeah. you find your dad. You know? That was fun, though. That was all. You know, yeah. I, what a I, cool guy. I'm not, I'm not even kidding with you. I, I've met with him a couple times, and he's really been a, a really, really cool guy. He's a, a heavy hitter in the business, and honestly, it was an honor to sit here and it's chat like, with him for a few And it's kind of cool because it's like you hear the name... EJ the DJ, that's him. That's him. Like, that's he the guy. Is yeah. The EJ of the DJ, like that. Yeah. That's him. And uh, you know something, I'm sure that he's seen throughout his 30 plus years. What's that? Disasters. When disaster strikes. When disaster <laughs> strikes. <laughs> Dude, there are so many yeah. stories that we could talk and about. And all we could do is really laugh about it, because at the end of the day, all the stress and all the anxiety and all the planning when the disaster happens, after the weekend when you solve the problem and everyone's happy and everything was yeah. right, you give yourself a little pat in the back and you just laugh about it, because what else can you do? I mean, there are, there are certain things that you can prevent. Yep. Certain things you can't. I'll give you a perfect yep. example. What could be prevented is agonized stress of scheduling. Scheduling. Okay. Two weeks ago. I'm going to admit this because I did it and it's my fault. It happens. I was, human. I had a, um, going over the weekend, all set, everything looks good. I opened my email and for some reason now Gmail is now adding reminders. Like yep. if you didn't answer an email. So I see an email and it says, hey, just, just uh, sending my music list over mm. and I see the date. I know that date. I know that party. Oops. I go on the calendar. It was never added to the calendar. It happens. So you could have the, you know, you could have the contract signed. You could have already been, and I already got paid for the event too. Even better. So that was even better. You're on the hook. So I was able to get it done and it went fantastic. But it was like God was sending me, hey, I'm gonna save your ass this time, but you better double check yourself. Yeah, pay more attention. Yeah. And how, I mean, listen, you, but we we're only, only human. We are only human. And I, I would happen. say most of the beginning of the week, I'm going over the schedule, mm -hmm. and then again, and then again. And well, then you know again. what happened. I mean, it's just very simple. I, I usually have a process yep. where I talk to the client, book the contract, goes in the calendar. Mm -hmm. Clearly, somewhere between those two things, something happened where someone distracted me, yep. and it never made it onto the contract. Oh, happens and never all the made time. It on there. So, thank That's you why we have covered. our list of right. emergency call guys. Everyone should have a list, uh, like a Rolodex, right. for those who know what that is, of emergency <laughs> contacts. It really helps on a, when you're in a pinch. I mean, uh, with our DJ group on Facebook, we have a emergency group emergency me group. group. Yeah, group and me. And you can send out a message. I need a speaker. And they're and all guys. Someone that we will all cover check it. and someone you know, will help figure you figure it out. Because so you need an emergency plan. And I mean, we did a whole show on backup equipment. Yes. But I mean, I'll just mention that really quick. You know, it's like sending a photo booth out. You don't have an extra printer. You are really extra rolling printer, dice. Extra camera. Yeah. Got to be prepared. Got to be prepared, man. Yeah. Speakers. Things break. It's thing. electronics. Extra. You know? you know, I've seen multiple times with DJs that I've worked with in the past. They show up and they have this cute little wire bag, and it has two XLRs, two power cords, <laughs> just one enough, extension cord. Just barely. Are enough. you outside your damn mind? <laughs> What happens if one of those wires? Well, you know, stops they're DJing out of a Honda Civic, so they didn't have room for the extra wire. And listen, I, I I I respect where they're at, but they can they can go out their Honda Civic all they want. Yep. Pack two more damn wires. Just shove them under the seat. Come on, for man. backup, and leave just, them there and forget about people them. People used to them. laugh at me when I would bring new roadies on or something like that. Mm. How much crap I would have, and I'm like, I don't want an issue. Yep. You know, or I would I would always carry the funniest wire I ever carried was I had a hundred foot. RCA eighth, and you need it that one and time. And then the one time they decided that they were going to have a projector in the middle of the dance floor, you were able. To and I needed to have sound, ha, huh, laugh in their face. But you were the hero that day. I was the yeah. hero, and yeah. there's been so many times you can just, you can name them. I mean, yeah, just, just how like many things? Endless have been amount with? of disasters, but you know, it's how you handle it mm -hmm. that is the. It shows your true character. You need to be able to handle it in this. front of our client where they don't know what's going yes. on. Yes. You put your poker face on and you just smile and pretend that nothing's wrong and you make sure your staff acts the same way. So that way the client doesn't get stressed out and no one gets stressed out. Everyone stays calm in an emergency and you can handle the and situation. And it's about how you speak as well. If yes. you're, let's say your photo booth, your printer isn't working. Yep. Right? Never say, calls up never and, say and, it's and not you, working. And you go, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, we're having some issues. Yep. Like, it's never not say issues. I'm sorry, that's not yeah. what you say. We're going to fix just, it. We're changing the printer. We're actually just changing yeah. out the printer yep. so that you know we can print some more. Yep. That will come out so in five minutes. Never refreshing. say no, the N word. Or even the bigger one for me is the MC. Oh, yeah. If the MC ever announces something over the mic, 
Can you make me louder? Oh, I will punch you. I will punch you to do that type well, of thing. Well, RMCs, we do hand signals. So if you want to raise the mic, you just go. Right, exactly. Or, sh- it, you you got to let people yeah. know without letting them, without Absolutely. letting everyone else know. It's, it's very simple. Mm-hmm. You know, like with me, and we've talked about this as well off camera, is I don't like to put DJs and MCs together that have never worked together. Yeah, it's an if you're awkward showing experience. Up, if you're showing up to do a wedding and you've never worked with a DJ, there's no synergy. None. It's gonna, and the guests and will it, notice. It might be see. a good DJ yeah. and it might be a good MC, but if they have never worked together. Yeah. They don't know when no, to play the songs they at the right time. They don't know hand signs. They there's don't no know flow, all these things. Like no, the DJs uh, that work forth. with me when I MC, I have, cert- I, I have certain cues that I use mm. for my hand signs yep. for the transitions of the songs during a grand entrance. They're not going to know. I, I could tell them beforehand, but again, it's not going to be as smooth. My favorite MC hand sign is... Time for the cake. <laughs> cake We're done. cutting the cake. We're cutting the cake. Um, I have to talk about something that just happened uh, this past weekend, at, okay. uh, two weekends ago, actually, at a wedding. We were about to start the ceremony, and Grandma fell and hit the pavement and was laying out for about 10 minutes before the ceremony was supposed to start. Wow. And everything started to get really awkward because... The background music kept going. We were going about 10 minutes past the ceremony start time. Right. People start looking around, and it's like, what do you do in that situation? Yeah. So in my opinion, you keep the music going. You try to downplay any mm-hmm. event. And I always like to operate by the uh, adage that you don't get involved. If yeah. it's not your you know, staff and your immediate issue, let the family handle their right. family. Exactly. Don't go touch the person that fell. Yeah. You know, just stay out of it. Do what you can from afar. Do what you can from afar. You know, we had, that, we had a couple damage. things happen like that. We had uh, we were doing a communion one time, and one of the fathers decided it was a smart idea to put the kid on the shoulders Ooh. in musical chairs, Ooh. and the kid fell. And it was bad. So Ooh. obviously we stopped the game. Yeah. But it was like, and it was like. I was fresh. I was, mm. I was a pretty, and I was so heart wrenching. Like, what do I do right now? And even better, actually, I was doing a, I was doing a wedding, and I talked about this when we talked about how to do a good MC, which was mm. actually our first show. We had yeah. DJ Jake on yep. After Hours, and that was fun. I was doing a, I was doing a giant Irish and Scottish off the boat wedding. Mm-hmm. Twenty six people in the bridal party. All right, I get everyone in, but the bride and groom. Mm-hmm. As soon as I get ready to do the bride and groom. Now, this is a 250-person wedding. Power goes out. All eyes on you. The whole place goes out. You have about two milliseconds to figure out what the hell you got to do. Because they're waiting outside. It's their wedding day. They get (laughs) one. I hopped up on top of the sub, and I finished the damn thing a cappella. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen. As loud as you possibly can muster and and just belt it out. No BS. After they came in, because it somehow worked out where as soon as they opened the doors, the power, power came went back, back on. Of course. Back on. The bride and groom didn't know what happened. It's all part of the show. They thought it was part of the show. Yeah, it's all part of the show. And it was the coolest thing in the world. But mm-hmm. I could have just imagined if I wasn't kind of seasoned at that point and had been doing this a long time, being like, oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, and then running downstairs trying to find the major D. And the bride and groom are waiting outside the room. We're going out in the hallway and asking the bride and groom, hey, uh, the power went out. What, what should you, I do? You yeah, know? you have to, you got to make a decision. Yep. It's got to be the right decision. And you got to do it without anyone else knowing. It's tough being the MC. That's why it's not cut out for everyone. It's everybody. not for everyone. And you got to be ready for when disaster strikes because anything could happen at, at any time. I, always, I feel like I, I tell people when, they're, when they ask about becoming an MC, I say it, it's very simple. Mm-hmm. 80% of it is almost a script. Yes. I say almost the same thing yep. every time. I'm filling in the blanks of what, who, where we are, who we're with, yeah. yada, yada, yada. Living. It's the 20% when things happen that shouldn't. Yep. Or when you know you play a song that you think should go well, and it doesn't. Or you're playing you a song transition. for like a formality, like a special dance, the, whether it be the first dance or a father daughter dance, and it's the wrong version. And then right. you have the client looking at you, staring at you, and then they come up to you in the middle of the party, and it's like, what do you do? So right. you have to apologize right. and say, I'm only human. And it doesn't matter even if you're not wrong, because I've yeah. had it before. Where they were, they stopped. Yeah. Like, this is the wrong song. Yeah. Or the client said we the emailed wrong song. you, but they yeah. never emailed us yep. the change. Yep. Never told us the change. And that's why another yeah. great thing I like to do, if possible, is right before cocktail hour, I try to grab the bride and groom and let bring them, them listen the show. to their first, first dance. Yeah, let them let them see the let them see you know the main ballroom. Mm-hmm. Just really quick. I just want to make sure we're all good. Just want to go over that. When, when no they're changes. doing the uh, the room shots before the wedding, that's always when I try to. I grab play them. the first dance while they're taking right. their pictures, and that way they can hear it ahead of time. Right, and if there's every anyone, now and then, and it's if there's anyone on staff that's important, you know, yep. I want them to know the photo booth guy. I want them to say, yes. "Hey, Steve, can we take another picture?" You know, I want them to make sure that you know they know those people. They should already kind of know the DJ and the MC. 
I mean, I would hope they would have met with them. Unless they call and book over the phone, sight unseen, which happens sometimes. I, I know, but I almost get a little weary when booking a wedding over the phone. Mm. I almost don't like it sometimes. I do and I don't. Some people just don't care. And if they Some book over the don't... phone, that means they're easygoing. And whatever you do, they trust you and they'll be happy. 90%. 90%. I also like to feel like, though, I like to have the bride and groom come in the office because mm-hmm. I want to make sure the synergy works. I feel more comfortable when I sit I with them. I want to make sure that the synergy is compatible. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just as much as they want us, mm-hmm. I want to want them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want them. If I know I'm going to have a troubled client, yep. I might not necessarily book it. You might have a client that's like a fist pumping maniac from the Jersey Shore, right. and that's not your style. So you want to make sure you mesh well or put an MC that fits their exactly. style better. Yeah, I don't. To be more successful that way. 100% agree. Yep. You have to know what you're walking into. And so I try not to go in blind if I can't, but if I have to, you know, we, we make the best. I, I got to bring this up Please because do. this was an issue at a, a friend's wedding um, last weekend, actually. Um, it goes along with the when disaster strikes theme. Dun, dun, dun. The DJ or the MC is drinking at the party, oh maybe God, a little too that's much. That's a no no. Or doing drugs at the party. Like, uh, that, that's a no no anywhere. You know, cocaine and <laughs> his eyes are wide open. We're going to do the intros. You're ready to party. Let's go. Um, it's a bad look. It's and, a bad, well, it's just overall. I think yeah. it's a bad stigma. You know, drugs are one thing, legal, not supposed to be doing it. But the drinking DJs have been doing this 15 years. They're at an event. They feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. They might not even know the clients. And they have one, and one leads to two. And then the groom comes up and says, let's do shots. And then before you know it, you're drunk, but you're also representing your company right. that way. I mean, I have a big no drinking policy. I have a no I mean, drinking I, policy. You, either. You're not, your insurance won't cover it. I don't care if there's an open bar. Stuff. That's an open bar. Yep. For the guests. That's not mm-hmm. for you. You're working. It's the same as if you were at your office job. It's a job. It's a job yeah. and you're working. I don't care. Yes, you're working in a party scene. Mm-hmm. But you're not, you're bringing the party. You're not at the party. Yep. You know what I mean? And it, some you're, people, you're at work. You're not at a party as a guest. And you know, I, I've made the mistake before where I didn't have, I didn't think I had to say it. Yep. But I've had roadies that worked their first day. First day. And they come up. And they got a damn Jack and Coke in hand. Or like, a screwdriver. I'm like, like, what are you doing? It's the same thing. Yeah. Driving in the truck, yep. if they're in the passenger seat, and they start vaping or something like that in the truck, but mm. they didn't ask me. Yes. You know what I mean? I might not care if we open the window or something, but... Courtesy. There is none. Yep. You have a to, lot of people have don't to be, have courtesy now. You have to be courteous. And, and we're even leaving smoke. Yep. Without letting anyone know. Go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom. As a roadie, you have to always let the MC or the DJ in charge know everyone should when know you're where leaving everyone the room. Is. Everyone. If there's an emergency and they need you, you're getting paid $100, $200 for the four to six hours, and you're missing the 20 minutes of the event that the person who hired you needs you. That's a problem. Or, you know, when it's time to break down and someone magically yep. disappears. I don't get that because, you know, if the party's over at midnight and... Don't you uh, want to go home? Don't you want to go home? You Apparently don't get paid not. to be there past the strike time. So at 11.55, you should be standing there ready, ready to, to go. go. All the bags all the are bags wide open. open. Yeah, wide open. You do the pre-pack up where your headphones are put away. The wires start getting pulled up. So that way at midnight, you're ready to strike and go. And you I've had so. weddings that have ended where myself and the DJ are standing there and the roadie's in the bathroom. You had four hours to go to the bathroom. Right. Or the um, best will be where someone didn't, they come on their own, you know, they meet us there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I have to leave early. I didn't tell you. I, yep. I got to leave at, at 12. I can't stay for breakdown. You're getting paid for breakdown. You're getting paid for breakdown. That's what you're part of your. And that's why having that list, uh, that Rolodex of different roadies, MCs, DJs this across gonna, the this board. This could be a whole show when disaster saves, strikes. Yeah, saves your, your life. All right, so we got the Ape the ape Stick 4 coming up, Yes, right? stay tuned because um, we have the Ape Sticks uh, coming out. We're going to show really you excited, everything man. about them, and it's really cool. Awesome. Cue Points Podcast coming back with our review of the week. Yeah. Right after this, make sure you stay tuned. Cue Points, the mobile DJ podcast. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's Jeff Short with Chauvet DJ, and I'm here with my friend DJ Brent, Brent Schmidt of B Productions from Cleveland. Brent, how are you? I'm doing great today, Jeff. How are you? Good. Well, we're here today to talk about the brand new Intimidator Spot 475Z. This thing is a beast. It's bright. It's powerful. And Brent, you've had a chance to play around with it a little bit. What are your first impressions? First off, 250 watt LED inside of this fixture is fantastic. It is super bright, dual rotating prisms. And another thing I like about this fixture is the dual gobo wheels. 
you know, in our theater application, we are able to overlap two gobos on stage. So if we're doing something either to paint the backdrop of, uh, you know, on stage or on the floor of the stage, we're able to use both the dual wheels. The other great thing about this product is the Z in the product name, which stands for Zoom. Motorized Zoom, what are your thoughts about that? Well, through DMX, you're able to go from a grand entrance look, and then all of a sudden, if you need to change looks to the cake, that motorized Zoom comes in very <laughs> handy to go from a wide shot to a very tight beam. So it gives you that flexibility and versatility automatically or through DMX control to change that zoom projection Absolutely. for shorter long throw applications. Yep. Brent, once again, thank you for being here. We appreciate you taking the time to check out the Intimidator Spot 475Z. Final thoughts? It's bright, it's powerful, it's robust, it's perfect for us. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely. And thank you for watching. Jeff Short with Chauvet DJ. We'll see you next time. Welcome, welcome back. Q Points, the mobile DJ podcast. Been a great show so far, man. We talked about some really important things, you know, when it comes to danger and how crazy it's been. And then we had EJ on. It's just, yeah, EJ was fun. It's awesome, yeah. man. And now I'm excited to learn about these guys the right sticks. here. So, yeah. first of all, this is like, we use something. Oh, Turn that's right. Ooh. I used something like this probably back in like 2000 and maybe like 11. Mm-hmm. But nowhere near close as not like that. And, not, you, had to, and you had to plug them in. And you had to plug them in. Not yeah. only did you have to do that, there were big giant clamps. These are magnetic, man. I mean, I almost feel like it's on the back here. You got two magnets, one, two, and anything magnetic you can stick them to. I see them uh, stuck to the ceiling, to anything magnetic. And you were actually just letting me know that now with with staging, because you know our, I made this backdrop out of staging. We actually have inputs you can put in now. That would make these magnets. So that's actually something yeah. I'm going to look into. Really cool, right? Because th these are really, and they're really bright. I mean, do that again. Super bright. Turn them on. I'm going to turn them on. The, I want to see the. They have uh, this wireless remote here, and boom. I mean, that, that yeah. and it gives a different kind of look, which is very cool. And it's, it's really bright. They're fantastic. These I love are awesome. them. Awesome. So, now, what, what's your primary use with these? So, I have the uh, EV Evolve 50 speakers, okay. which are column speakers. And the XLR and power are in the pole. So the pole is not a round shape, so you can't clamp a regular light onto the pole for your basic light show. Okay. So what we do is we use these sticks that fit the pole, and I have this awesome Velcro. Whoa. And we just strap them to the pole, and people love them. I've had people come up to me at the party and say, these things are so cool. Where did you get them from? They're bright. They change color. They do sound active mode, and they want them. And then I tell them uh, these are professionals only. Yeah. yeah. Now listen, they're they're at, they're at the prop. What's the price target on these right now? So I'm looking on Amazon. They're two fifty nine each. Okay. And I got this two pack here for I believe five hundred and change. It's not bad. And it included both lights. It included the wireless remote, which lets you control them, and my favorite part here, the charger. So with this charger, you got a two. Splitter oh wow, here. that's interesting. I didn't even see that. Before. So one plug. And you just plug them in, and, and they both charge up. And when they're done charging, they flash screen, so you know they're good to go. Now, I'll tell you right now, I had seen these at IDJ now. Mm -hmm. I was actually playing with them before you even brought them up. The coolest, and the reason why I'm not even joking where I might be buying a set of these, because mm -hmm. I think they, I believe they sell them in a pack of either 9 or 12, is the charging case. Now, I have charging cases, all right? I, I have plenty of charging cases. But my charging cases, you have to plug in each individual light. Yes. These guys actually have where you can stand these up just like this into and the case. Slide them in. And they will start charging automatically. Yep. So you don't have to plug each individual. The amount light. of time that saves yep. alone is worth it. And you get a great visual cue that they're charging as well. Not to mention, I also, you know, if it's not made in the United States, mm -hmm. I want it to be made in Germany. Yes. You know, like the innovators of, you With know, the Chinese ingenuity. lights and the Chinese equipment, I've seen a lot of issues. I've heard stories, especially local. Of if people's, it's not licensed, if it's not yes, a real, if it's yeah. not you know certified. I've had uh, people who were charging uh, Chinese made lights in their garage, mm -hmm. and their garage burned I've down. Seen these pictures and with all scary. their equipment in it. It's it's really it's scary. a DJ's worst nightmare. And I mean, I know that the guys will say, "Yeah, it's made with the same stuff." It's 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 not. It's not. I mean, I've opened up a Chinese picks. light, and there was a toothpick. 
spacing the motherboards apart. A toothpick. A literal toothpick. Yeah, hot glued in there. I couldn't believe it. And, of course, the light was broken, irreparable. So, uh, Chinese lights, you got to be careful. The American-made stuff, we love Chauvet. It always works. Always American will. DJ Absolutely. Is great. And but this German another, engineers. Yeah. I mean, but I just Mercedes, like, Volkswagen. but there's just not really any light that kind of looks like this. It's I mean, very unique. It, it's a different style very unique. of LED. It's a sleek tube and all aluminum. For, oh, it's lightweight. And a lot of people like to attach them to the ceiling all around the room yeah, to give you a about, different style of a lighting effect. It's not I mean, your traditional light. And on full power, you're going to get eight hours. Yes. Yeah, so, that's pretty impressive. And now you own them. How does the battery hold up? I've used these mm -hmm. at six hour events and they were still going at the end. So I had to do a test. I, I didn't believe that eight hours out of these little sticks was possible. Right. So I set them up in the house. I left them on full white and I got eight plus hours out of them. Isn't that crazy? That's a little insane. stick gives the, you eight plus hours of battery. I can life. really see for, you know, my versatility is, you know, lighting up tables. Yes. You know, that's a really cool thing. I spoke to my buddy, Brandon, who does mm -hmm. a lot of dance stage work. And he told me he wants them for the dance stages. They will light up the stages, the acrylic, yeah. and make it really glow. That would be and sick. Look fantastic. And look, they would fit right inside of it. It's this. so cool. They would fit right yep. inside on an angle. Yep. He even that's told me really that cool they look. have like a special clip that's uh, coming out where you can clip them into the stages so really? they don't move around or fall over or anything. How's the range been for the remote? So this little remote, I was a little, you know, concerned about it. It's tiny. Uh, we're used to using like Show Express and mm -hmm. and professional, you know, big remote setups with transmitters. Um, this remote. I was told has a 3,000 foot range. I'm sorry, a 100 foot range, and you can upgrade to the W8, which is a uh, app controlled transmitter that gives you that 3,000 foot That's range. That's even cooler. Yeah. So 100 foot range, or if you want to go really far, 3,000 feet, you get the W8. Um, it's a wireless box that lets you app control all your I Ape like Labs that. lights, and what not I just the Ape And sticks. also, I like is that this remote can be used with all their different types of lights. Yes, this because is a are, universal. There are a couple Ape different Labs types remote. of light. Of, I mean, they have so much, and we could spend an entire show Absolutely. just going over a review of the different yeah. products that they offer. But I mean, they have the sticks, they have the maxis, which are nice squares. They also have this really cool one that I was playing around with in the in the in IDJ now, which is the cans. The it, cans give off a really cool, different. ominous circle, yes. and I can really see it being used for some type of centerpiece style. Oh yeah, you know, really, really that cool, just a different style look. It also makes a cool effect on the wall. It gives you like a different beam shape. Right, it's almost like yeah, it's it, it's, it's just it's so yeah. cool. They also make the art style light, which gives you that triple beam style projection with a adjustable uh, filter so you can change the shape of the beam the triple beam style projection on the wall and for it's the, a different style and for of the guys lighting. that are doing installs you know or something like that you know you, you they also have the double wall mini and the double wall maxi which are basically you know wall mounted lights i mean there's just for really, installation for installation yeah, they call it architectural lighting and it's so cool because these uh double wall lights they shoot a light up and down yeah. and it creates such a cool effect that when you walk into this room you feel like you're in another place i would even like to put those in like you know, i put them in my house, house. yeah, yeah. Or, or the, yeah, house. yeah why not yeah. let's just be honest we're, we're djs and we have problems but i feel like the <laughs> price target is pretty fair because Absolutely. i mean if you're talking about any type of you know wireless light 300 you know, and change. 300 and change. Yep. And these are priced correctly. Just below it. Yep. You know, and I and I definitely and they and they light up walls pretty well. Oh, they're so bright. They light up in, if you put it at the bottom of the Cuz I mean, you're going to get a decent yeah. amount of space whereas the square ones, don't yep. get me wrong, like you know, once you're talking about the Freedoms, everything of Chevet. These are short throw but right. wide spread. If you're looking to light up a wall with a beam, then you need something like the can that's a right. uh, you're gonna, long throw with a small spread. Yeah, you're going to look at one of their other options, but yeah. as a whole, the company I like it. I I'm mean, very impressed. Um, I spoke with my uh, buddy Owen, who is the USA rep for Ape Labs, mm -hmm. and he is the most nicest, accommodating person I've ever spoke to. And sometimes with equipment, our biggest worry is issues. Right. And their customer service is great. He answers you right away. Ape Labs picks up the phone. They want to make the customer happy, which in my book is the most important factor. 100%. Absolutely. But and German build quality. These things are no, these rock things, solid. You, you, yeah, you don't. I mean, this yeah. is a heavy duty light. I you, wouldn't, I wouldn't like lightsaber battle with you. Dude, them. I mean, that's yeah. what I was thinking. When you brought, when everybody brought wants over, to do it, they want a lightsaber battle. These are a solid color. Yep. I just don't want to hit them itself. We'll put them in PVC piping. They don't make the sound, the fun, you know, lightsaber sound. I mean, sound. we're DJs. We can make it ourselves. <laughs> um, really <laughs> exciting. Ape Labs has unreleased items coming out and i'm hoping to get our hands yeah, on that them would be really for cool our next show. show there's a lot of hype right now about the ape coin it's a small round 
um, 15 watt LED that can change color. I believe it is water resistant or waterproof because I did see a video of them hosing oh. it down, which kind of blew my mind. And it's USB powered. So you could plug this little round 15 watt LED into any USB power source. Right. And the, depending on the size of the battery, run it 10, 20, 30 hours off and a I USB mean, stick. There are so many places yep. where you're not able to get a full uplight. Yep. And that could be saving grace yeah. because there are, you know there's a lot of things where i might want to put a small puck in front of the subwoofer yeah. but i don't want to see it you, you won't see it that could you be know a big up light in front of the speaker you're going to see it and people are going to kick it people are definitely going to kick it and then the worst yeah. is you know you got to make sure you have the right color up lights that's true you know what i mean if you have a white system you better yeah. have white up lights to match or what are you doing otherwise thing, it looks black, uh, a little bit silly it might yeah yep. you know you have to make things match and again just another added expense, but you yeah. have to do it, man. Well, we're going to buy all these things. We already know. Uh, they're taking the, the little coin one step further, and mm -hmm. I heard they're coming out with uh, Ape Table, where they have the coin in the table, Shut and these up. are like um, decor tables, and the That's coin right will shine alley. on the ceiling and on the floor, so these tables also cast light in the room That's... and create their own little effect, which is so cool. I can't wait for these things to come out and show everybody. That's Ape Labs. They got big things in the works. I'm really, we're really like I said, me, the biggest thing overall is I'm just impressed with the light itself. Yeah. But I just love the charging case aspect. And it's, and it's as, as far as I've seen, all three lights that I've tested, mm -hmm. they all have it where they plug into the case. Yes. Itself. Yep. So there is no extra wire. I just bought the two pack in. just to use them for the DJ and test them out it's and bit, show everybody. Yeah, but I would be kind of mad if I were you yeah. if I bought them and I wasn't impressed with them and I spent all this money. Exactly. You, know, you have to play um, around with things and sometimes you have to buy. You know, before I bought the Freedoms, I bought two of them. You I have to, to see how you they work. You have to test it and make you sure know? they fit the look that you're going for, right. like we discussed earlier, because they might not create the look. And don't get me wrong, for. I love my my, my mm. Freedom Pars and my quads. They're amazing. However, on those on those jobs where you might not have as much time, being able to plug these back into the case real quick oh, yeah. is a huge saving. And they're bright. I mean, you could see here. Oh, yeah. All I these mean, studio lights, they're still lighting up Yeah, I mean, it's very up bright here, but on top, I mean, you could see that perfectly as a reflection through the plexi. I love the fact that with the remote, I can not have to worry about controlling them while I'm DJing. I can right. put them into sound mode, and they just do their thing to the music automatically, and you don't have to yeah, think about that it. that is pretty good. And they have different strobes and different sound modes. They really thought them out, because a lot of the Chinese lights have no programming. So you get these lights, and they're cool, but then you got to spend hours on right. Cho Express and have the controller and program every little bit. And of a them. lot of the lights, as we've said, are square and yep. they're circle. This is a bar. This can be used on a lot of, like on the speaker stands, on the facade itself, on dance. I mean, there are so many different things that you could do because it's a, it's a line and not a circle. So mm. it's, I see it as an amazing add-on to my already big light collection. Absolutely. So I see it being another expense in the back. It's my new basic light show. <laughs> a lot of DJs use basic light shows that project colored lights dancing to the music in the crowd. Right. And then I have photographers always coming up to me after the can first you, dance right. or after whatever saying... Your lights are cool, but there's little dots in all the pictures, right. and it's ruining the photos. Right. So we solved that problem by using washes to light up the dance floor for dancing. Which, which makes sense. It, it, it does, because Different as far effects. as, you know, the photographers do get in our way sometimes. You know, yep. you know, you build a beautiful, beautiful setup, and a mm. smack right in the middle is a nice stand with a light. <laughs> tripod, lighting However, tripod. However, at the end of the day, you need to remember, you need to put your ego aside. Yep. And remember, at the end of the day, they need to get their pictures. Yes. Because they're getting paid just like us. However, when we're done, they have their memories, but a picture is yep. a thousand words. And we got to work with them again. We got to work with them again because yep. a lot of these photographers the are going to see. The end is to create the look that we're trying to create, make the party fun and ha uh, happen, right. and then make the client, whether it's a, a wedding, a right. room, or a bar mitzvah girl. And when it, or, and, yeah, and when it comes like, to lighting, there's you just, make them happy. you want to make them happy. And this is sort of no-nos. You know, during certain dances, make sure your lights aren't flashing. You know, make, make, you know, make sure any time of ceremony thing going on. The most important thing is during dinner while people are eating, you take the remote and you turn the light off. Turn the light off. Yeah, I see too many parties. Everything's uh, still going. I'm a guest sitting there eating my dinner, and the DJ left the room, and the uplighting around the room is strobing, strobing, and they uh, they're nowhere to be found. Well, I definitely say check out Ape Labs. You got to go to apelabsusa.com to check them out. Brett, thank you so much, man. This is awesome. Out today. All right. If you have any questions about these things, feel free to ask Message me. Message us, me guys. Up. Again, QPointsPodcast.com. We have a forum there. Hit us up on Facebook. Go to QPointsPodcast on Facebook. And we're going to be back next week at noon. Guys, thank you again for tuning in. We want to thank EJ, the DJ, for coming on. Mr. Ed Jacobs. That was an amazing that was interview. Awesome. So happy to have him here. Again, 
awesome ape labs you got to check out these lights and we will see you guys again next week hey, thanks so much don't for forget in. subscribe and share subscribe and share boys nice job brother thank you so much